Astrotometry log. It's September 30th, 2010. It's approximately 510 UTC at the time of this recording. What you're looking at here is the C3 image in the uh, Soho Lasco instrument. Uh, this is, these are the most recent images. And you can see this little comet coming here, heading for the sun. And this is the comet that I prophesized in the last video. Now this isn't a surprise and it's definitely not really prophecy. This is a new understanding about the nature of time space and I had forecast this based on these little objects uh, surrounding this sunspot and another one that has gone over the limb here that is a lot more active. And in astrotometry these are understood to be sort of short circuits in time space that is perceived because of the Earth's hypertime uh, translation interference because this object is moving in between the Sun and the Earth. And so this is a hypertime interference that we're seeing on the primary time axis. And this is the way you have to think about it. If you really want to understand the relationship between the coronal holes and the earthquakes, between the coronal mass ejections and the tropical cyclones, and the way that these things unfold through the space that we uh, think is three-dimensional because of our three-dimensional perception, but clearly if you look at the way that this is moving in time, uh, especially like in the higher frequency energy, in the x-ray energy, um, there's something else that's going on. And so what I'm offering is an alternative paradigm for the construction of the solar system that explains how these things are correlated. And if you pay attention to this object, what you'll find out is that it will graze the sun. Now, the place where you see it stop right here, this is a loop, the place where you see it stop right here is the most recent data. But what will happen is it will continue on its track towards the sun. Uh, that's this right here that's being covered up by this larger disk in order to see the coronal mass ejections. But what will happen is a while after it appears to have collided with the sun, there will be a coronal mass ejection that comes out from the sun and I'm suspecting that it's going to be uh, from this region right here. Considering how active this is, I'm suspecting that as this gets closer and closer, this will well up, uh, turn around and eject a coronal mass. Now, several days after that happens, what we will see is a cyclone forming probably in the southern hemisphere if it's if it's this sort of a coronal mass ejection depending on the size and whether or not it's interfered with by another coronal mass ejection and so this is a completely new model uh, about the nature of time space and this is how i came to look for the correlation between the coronal holes and the earthquakes back during the peak of the solar cycle, these comets were very common as coronal mass ejections were. But since there has been this really, really low activity period with this lull in solar activity, these comets have been more rare. And if you're interested, SOHO is having a contest to detect the um, 2000th comet and the 1,000th comet was detected back in 2005, back when sunspots were a lot more common.